What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 8 in the Math 3 questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question gives us the graph of an equation, and we're supposed to figure out which equation represents this graph. Now, since it looks like a V, you can probably guess that it's an absolute value function, and we're going to have to deal with transforming functions in some way. All right, so I'm actually going to start by graphing what's called the parent function of this y equals the absolute value of x. And if I graph it in my calculator for reference, let me turn plot one off, the absolute value of x, uh, let me make sure it's um, at the correct window dimensions. This just looks like a v. And it's hitting right at this corner, right at this corner. So that tells me that it's just, oh man, this is horrible. That is just this V right here. On the left side, it looks like Y equals negative X. On the right side, it looks like Y equals X. So now, I have a visual reference, and it also looks like a clothing logo. Um, I have a visual reference of, here's what we started with, what did we do to get here? And first thing I can see is that this is hitting the Y axis at negative two, that's where both functions are converging. And if I remember from transforming that a left to right shift and an up or down shift actually look rather different because a left to right shift is going to mean that in parentheses, I see x minus 2, and this would actually be 2 to the right because this is negative here, whereas an up or down shift, I would see whatever my x expression is, minus 2. So if it were a left to right shift, it would be inside the parentheses or the absolute value bars or whatever, but if it were an up or down shift, it would just be outside that. And let me put parentheses here to emphasize that. Now. This is clearly an up or down shift. We haven't taken this graph and moved it left or right. We've moved it down two units, which means that I should be looking not for one of the answer choices where the minus two is inside the absolute value bars, but one of the answer choices where the minus two is outside. So the only question is, is this the absolute value of x minus two, or is it the absolute value of two x minus two? Now, if you recall, whenever we see the number two, written as a coefficient of our x inside our absolute value bars, or whatever we call this um, horizontal compression, which is essentially, it's like I took the original absolute value function and squeezed it in a little bit, and that looks about like it's what's happening here. So I would go with b, but just to give some more numerical um, proof, the slope of my, of, of my um, right function that is pointing upward and has a positive slope is actually 2, because I'm doing, going 2 squares up for every 1 square that I'm going right. And whenever you look at absolute value functions, your slope of either of those functions, whichever one is um, pointing up and to the right, is going to tell you what your coefficient inside your absolute value bars is going to be. So that tells me that my answer is b. y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 2. Horizontal compression shifted down 2 units.